So the judge said, okay, you guys don't have any evidence? Case dismissed. You're free to go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> What's going on? They just all of a sudden said, uh, case dismissed. This guy is talking, he's crying, he's not saying anything. And these guys, the FBI, showed their evidence. We were there, we did anything. And the judge says, we don't have any evidence of you. So what happens? So they go to the lawyer after this. He's like, yeah, this is my first case I ever did in my life. <laughs> so, so he's like, so then how did you, you know, he didn't say anything. What happened? So he said, the judge is my grandfather. <laughs> So then my judge, my, the judge is my grandfather. Wow. And the, small, the, kid. the kid happened to be, this guy came and the judge was his grandfather. There was no research in, uh, in the attorneys uh, like this? <laughs> so the, the, how did the Saudi Arabia knew that this guy's going to come and say, don't ask any questions. I know that Hashem's going to take care of you. So, so what, what's the lesson of the story? It's a true story. This guy said it at a seal. You know? Wow. So what's the lesson in the story? So, so Refine Waxman said, there's a lot of a lot of different messages, you know. You could see that if you see another Jew crying, you should go you should go approach him and talk to him and try to make him feel better, give him some advice. That's one one uh, thing. Yeah. The other the other is to have a Muna in that Sadiqim the Sadiqim said it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, nothing to worry about. They said uh, no, another another amazing uh, lesson you've taken away. So he said that this kind of story, the judge is the guy's grandfather. And this guy that's sitting there doesn't deserve anything. He deserves to be in jail for a hundred years. Did all the worst things, sell so many drugs, so many illegal things. He deserves to be there forever. But still, the judge is your grandfather. And if the judge is your grandfather, you can do whatever you want. And he's your grandfather, he loves you. So he's going to let you go. So, so too with Hashem. Hashem's not our grandfather, Hashem's our father. And he's higher than our father. He loves us more than our father loves us. So all the bad things we do, and all the things we say, we go to Hashem and say, I'm so sorry that I, I did this. You know, I'm never going to do this again. I do tshuva shleima. Hashem said, how can I say no to my son? He's my son. You know, he did all these bad things. He wants to come close to me now. He says, okay, fine. You caught him. Even if you caught him, he doesn't really do tshuva. You just say, I'm sorry. But you see, this is my father. My father's not going to say, say, go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to save you. No matter what you do, your father's going to save you. So my father was saying today, by I said, your father. Yeah. So he said that by Pesach, we we're on the 49th level of Toma. And he said, Hashem just said, you know what? Let's go. We're leaving oh. Egypt right now. They didn't get left time for the matzah to take nothing. So we're leaving right now. Why? Right. That when a, per a person, there's no reason to save the Jewish people. Let them stay forever in Egypt. They're on the 49th level of Toma. What do I want then? He says, when a father loves his child, there's nothing you could do about it. The father of the child, I'm gonna take you. Oh, when, love. when love happens, when something, when you feel love, you just get into it. You hug the person you see, you kiss the person. So your father says, my children are on this, on this level. Okay, so what? I can't do anything about it. I love them so much, I'm gonna take them right away. So we have to remember all the time that Hashem loves us so much. No matter what we do, Hashem loves us. And we always should try to become close to Him and feel Hashem in everything we do. Amen. Amen.